Hello and welcome to day two of our sixth grade math review. We are looking tonight at fractions as division. We're looking at ratios and multiplication and we'll be looking at converting some percents and some fractions into different forms. But we are starting tonight with um, looking at what seems like a very simple problem. It's number 34. We're pulling all of this from the 2017 uh, start test, in case you're wondering. And uh, what we are looking at is we are going to be first just starting about how we can uh, how we can identify a division problem and how it relates to fractions. And so what we need to do, uh, just give me one minute here. Uh, we need to make sure we get all of this, these items off here. There we go. What we need to do is we need to just understand that this is a problem simply about recognition. What is division? Amy has a five-yard border to put around the garden. It doesn't really matter much about what it is, but we'll, we'll draw a little rectangular garden here. Uh, we'll say the perimeter equals five yards. She uses all the border to make four sections that are the same length. And so what we have is we've got this five-yard border. And so let's say we were to lay that five yards from end to end. And so we would say the entire thing is going to be five yards. And what she ended up doing was wrapping this around her garden, right? And she's going to make four sections that are the same length. Okay, well, that's easy. So I'm going to break it up into four sections, and that's section one, section two, section three, and section four. The question is, is which expression does not equal the length of one of these sections? Well, what is the length of one of these sections? If I take my five yards and I divide it into four equal sections, I could do it this way if I wanted to. I could say five divided by four. And we'll look in just a moment at what that actually is, but that could be this way right here. We could do it like we learned in fourth grade, long division, where you put your divisor on the outside, you put a little division bar, you put your dividend on the inside, four goes into five, right? So that's what this one is right here. What we probably need to under start understanding in sixth grade is that you could also represent it as a fraction. So your numerator is the whole number. So you've got five yards, and you're going to break it up into four sections. And so this is another way that we could represent 5 divided by 4. All three of these are the exact same quantity. 5 divided by 4, 4 into 5, and then 5 fourths. And you're probably familiar with 5 fourths. Uh, that's going to be the same as if we divide up 4 goes into 5 one time with 1 left over. So it's going to be 1 and a quarter. So each of these pieces is going to be one and a quarter piece, uh, one and a quarter yards of length. And so that's really the biggest trick with this particular uh, standard is recognizing that a fraction is a division problem that is not yet finished. Fractions are unfinished divided, division problems. And that's probably not how fractions were introduced to you. Uh, when you first started learning about fractions in second grade and third grade, but as you get older and older and older, fractions and division, you just need to equate the two. So the correct answer is going to be F because this is the one that is not. 4 divided by 5, uh, that's going to equal 4 fifths, which is going to equal 0 0.8. That's the one that is incorrect. So moving on from there, let's take a look at uh, number 2 for this evening. And we're going to be looking at ratios, and a lot of times ratios are identified with multiplication, just like you have uh, fractions identified with division. So a house painter mixed five gallons of blue paint with every nine gallons of yellow paint in order to make a green paint, because yellow and blue make green. So which ratio of gallons of blue paint to yellow paint will make the same shade of green paint? So we're looking at, I'm going to show this as a fraction. You can show five ninths. And I'm going to be very particular to, to put my labels here. So five gallons of blue 
to nine gallons of yellow. You can show a ratio as a fraction like this. Uh, sometimes if you want, you can show it side by side with a colon like this, five to nine. Both of those are showing a proportion. For every five blue, you're gonna get nine yellow. So how can we get the same shade of green paint? How can we keep the same ratio? Well, really what we're looking at is equivalent fractions. So what we're gonna look at is, let's just take each of these four ratios right here. You see those are shown side by side, but I'm gonna flip it up and down. I'm gonna make it look like an equivalent fraction. That's gonna be a little bit easier to recognize. So what we need to do is we need to make sure we always keep the same labels in the same order. So we're always gonna have blue first, yellow second, blue first, yellow second. If we flip those, we get everything all mixed up. So let's say if, what if we were to do 30 to 54? Could we say that 5 ninths is equal to 30 blue and 54 yellow? Could those be equal? Well, let's see if we can make an equivalent fraction. So 5 times 6 would make 30. 9 times 6 would make 54. So if I multiply by 6 over 6, it does look like 5 ninths is going to equal 3054. So it looks like we might have our answer. Let's just take a look. Because remember, when we're making equivalent fractions, we have to multiply by one. And in this case, six over six, six sixths equals one. That's how we can make an equivalent fraction. Let's look at B just to make sure that it's not correct. We've got five over nine. And does that equal six over 10? No, what that's doing is it's doing a plus one, plus one. But that's not how equivalent fractions, or in this case, equivalent ratios work. You don't multiply by one, you times by one. In this case, we had six six, so that's not gonna work. Let's look at C, five ninths. Does that equal 10 40 fifths? Well, I can multiply five times two to get 10, but then it's gonna be nine times five to get 45. And that is not an equivalent fraction. Five ninths is not equal to 10 45ths because the two and the five that we multiply by, they have to be the same. It has to equal one. So that's not going to work for us. And then finally, let's look at our D. So we'll look at, again, five ninths. Does that equal 27 15? So I could tell you without even multiplying, that's not going to work because five doesn't multiply evenly into, into 27 nor does 9 multiply evenly into 15. Looks like they flipped it, or they did some kind of weird, I'm not sure what they did here. So our answer is going to be this A right here. That is uh, 30, 54, that is the one that is going to work. And so we are going uh, to leave that as the biggest trick with ratios is if you just look at them as a fraction, right? You can write it side by side, five ninths. You can also view it like a fraction, five to nine. And then once you do that, then the normal fraction rules apply. So that's a trick for that. And let's move on to our final problem of this evening. We are going to get into some percents and some fractions. A company spent 32% of its annual budget developing a new machine. What fraction of the company's budget was spent developing the new machine? Really, this is one simple problem. What does 32% equal as a fraction? 32% as a fraction. This particular standard is just measuring changing a percent to a fraction. We'll look in a moment how we can change a decimal to a fraction or a fraction to a decimal or a fraction to a percent. But how do we change 32% into a fraction? Well, we actually have to take two different steps. First, step one, we need to change 32% into a decimal. So what we need to do is realize that when you've got 32%, if there is no decimal place, because sometimes you might see a decimal like 32.9%, that's pretty easy because then you're going to have a decimal place that's obvious. If you don't have a decimal spot, that's apparent in the percent, you always put it after the ones place. So it's going to be 32.0, and we're just not going to write the point zero. But what we do is you always move the decimal 
twice to the left. So that's why we have to identify where the decimal is to begin with. So you're going to move the decimal two times to the left. That's just how we change from a percent to a decimal. So we're going to take your 32% and we're going to move it over once and we're going to move it over twice. So there's your decimal right there. And you always put a zero in front in the ones place and there's not, if there's not anything in the decimal in the ones place, you don't want to just write 0.32. Always put something in the ones place. In this case, we're going to put a zero. And so 32% is the same as 0 0.32. Now, how did that help us? We still haven't got to a fraction. Well, hopefully your sixth grade teacher gets mad at you a little bit if you say 0 0.32, because really, if you use correct place value terminology, this is not 0 0.32. This is 32, and then you name the second spot right there, hundredths, and that's where the fraction comes in. 32 hundredths can be written as 32 over 100. Your denominator can be the place value of the, far, the farthest digit. So you see how we started as 32%, we changed that to a decimal, and then the second is we changed the decimal to a fraction, just by using place value. So 0.32 is really 32 hundredths, change decimal to fraction using place value. But it's not as simple as that. I'm going to use PV for place value. Step three, simplify, simplify, simplify. We're going to have to simplify this fraction several times. 32 over 100. So if you don't know what to do, they're both even, just start dividing by 2. If you want, you can short circuit it by dividing by 4, but let's just say we don't know that they both can be divided by 4. If they're both even, just divide by 2. Divide top and bottom by 2, you're dividing by 1, which means you're making an equivalent fraction. So 32 divided by 2 is 16. 100 divided by 2 is going to be 50. So we're not done simplifying yet. That's why dividing by 4 would have actually gotten there quicker. Since they're both even, we're going to divide by 2 again. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 25 divided by 2 is 25. That's as far as we can go because 8 only has the factors of 1, 2, 4, and 8, and 25 only has 1, 5, and 25. So that's as simple as we can get. Lo and behold, there's our answer, H. So if you are changing from a percent to a fraction, it's two, sometimes three steps. Change the percent to a decimal. Then you change the decimal to a fraction using place value, and then simplify if possible. Sometimes with this particular standard, you might have to change a, let's say, let me move this out of the way here. Sometimes you might need to change a fraction to a decimal. So if we started with